Uh, we're thankful tonight uh, that we're here. Uh, before uh, we get started, before we uh, look in the Word of God, I want to be turning your Bible Genesis chapter fifty tonight. Uh, as we start our series, we launched this series on um, we launched this series on uh, Sunday. Uh, the uh, really it was forgiveness Sunday. We we're launching it tonight. The F word, uh, which is forgiveness. Amen. Uh, not the bomb, but the F word, forgiveness. Say amen when you can. So y'all go with me to Genesis chapter 50 tonight. And if you're ready for the word, y'all type in word, type in word, Genesis chapter 50. If you're ready for the word, type in word tonight. Uh, I'm going to be reading uh, from the HCSB uh, translations tonight. So y'all... Um, Y'all follow along with me. If you're reading from the New Living, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but I want to read from this translation tonight. Genesis chapter 50. Meet me at verse number 14. Uh, Genesis chapter 50, verse number 14. And it reads, uh, and Joseph buried his father. He returned to Egypt with his brothers and all who had gone with him to bury his father. When the brothers uh, saw that their father was dead, they said to one another, if Joseph is holding a grudge against us, he will certainly repay us for all the suffering we caused him. So they sent this message to Joseph. Before he died, your father gave a command saying to this Joseph, please forgive your brother's transgression and their sin, the suffering they caused you. Therefore, please forgive the transgression of the servants of God of the father. Joseph wept when their message came to him. Then his brothers also came to him, bowed down before him and said, we are your slaves. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You plan evil against me. God planned it for good to bring about the present result, the survival of many people. Therefore, don't be afraid. I will take care of you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Uh, tonight, uh, as we as we engage in our new series, the F word, as we talk about forgiveness, tonight I want to talk to us from the subject when forgiving you is hard to do. When forgiving you is is hard. To do. Can y'all put that in the chat box for me? When forgiving you is hard to do. God bless, bless your word tonight, God, and bless the people, uh, your people that hear it. For when, when forgiving you is hard uh, to do. T tonight, uh, I, like I told you Sunday, brothers and sisters in Christ, that we understand and we recognize that the God that we serve is a God of mercy. He's a God of grace. He's a God who loves, right? We would look through the word of God and how God sent his only son to die for my sins and your sins. As I told you on Sunday is that it is so interesting that it's so easy to receive the mercy of God. It is so easy uh, to receive uh, the forgiveness of God. If you're if you're honest tonight, it is so it is quite interesting that we are very uh we are Christians, but it is so easy uh to be a recipient of the grace of God. But oftentimes it's very difficult to give it back out. That 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 I, I want us to know I, I recognize that we are those who believe the Bible. We believe the word of God to be the word of God. Uh, there, there are scriptures that the word of God has told us on this matter. And I believe like anybody that the word of God is the infallible word of God for, for the Bible says in Matthew chapter six and verse number 15, the Bible says, but if you do not forgive others of their trespasses, neither would your father forgive you of your trespasses that there are scriptures like Colossians chapter three, verse number 13, where the Bible says, bearing with one another. And if one has complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you all mu so must forgive. It is also scriptures like Proverbs chapter 17, verse number nine, 
where the proverb writer would say, whatever, whoever covers an offense seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separate close friends. It, it is over and over in the word of God that we see from Old Testament to New Testament that God is looking for people who have been called out of the world into the kingdom of God's dear son. God is looking for a people who will, will reciprocate the same love, the same grace, and the same mercy that we have received to give it to somebody else. However, tonight we have a dilemma. Tonight we have a problem because if you have been living uh, any time in this world, that you know there are moments and there are times in your life when forgiving somebody can be hard to do. Can y'all be real tonight? That there, there are moments and there are times in your life where when somebody has hit you where it hurts, sometimes it's hard to say to the person, I forgive you. I, I, I wish I had somebody tonight who would be honest enough to say that you may be struggling with this thing called forgiveness. You, you, you may be toiling with this thing called forgiveness because you feel like you owe them uh, uh, owe them back or you want to seek revenge because of what they did to you. You, you find yourself not really showing up the way God wants you to show up as. But I want you to know tonight, as we look in the word of God, that God is looking for you and I, that when a person has harmed you, when a person has hurt you, when a person has brought pain in your life, God still looks at us as the people of God. And God wants us, in fact, to forgive the person who hurt us. I, I, I get you what you're saying. You don't know what they did to me. You don't know what they said to me. You don't know how, how much pain they brought me. But I want you to know tonight from the word of God that God is looking for us as the people of God and as the children of God to show ourselves to be exactly what God has called us to be. Is there anybody tonight who wants to testify tonight to say that I know I'm a child of God and I got to look like my daddy? That, is there anybody tonight who would say that the spirit of God lives and abides in me? And because of the spirit of God abides within me, I got to walk right and talk right and live the thing out the way God wants me to. I know it's a hard word tonight because when the person has harmed you, when the person has disappointed you, when the person has betrayed you, sometimes it's hard to show up the way God wants you to show up. Y'all ain't going to be honest tonight. Sometimes when, it's, when, the, when, the, when the pain hurts, when the hit hurts, sometimes it's difficult to show up the way God will have for us to show up. But tonight, I want us to understand. I, wanna, I want somebody tonight to know that God wants somebody tonight to be healed. He wants you to be delivered. He wants you to be set free. He wants you to not hold on to grudges. He don't want you to be bitter. He doesn't want you to walk out around here with malice in your heart. But God wants to release you tonight and wants to heal you so you can be able to tell the person, I forgive you. Now, 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 there's a book I read years ago called The Bait of Satan by John Prevere. It's a great book. You ought to get it. Uh, and in The Bait of Satan, uh, what he discussed is the word bait, uh, the bait of Satan. Satan used offense as bait. And what he does is he wants you to get offended. Because if you get offended and hold on to the offense, he can use the, that as bait to keep you into a spiritual prison with bitterness and hatred and malice in your heart. And tonight I want you to know that the devil, can't, the devil can't throw that bait in me. I want you to know tonight that when God is about to do tonight, he's about to show you in his word. He's about to teach you in his word. I know how bad it is. I know it hurts. I know you are in pain. But tonight I want to show you from the word of God what the do and how do you forgive somebody that hurt you? Number one, what I want to show you, uh, although when, when forgiving is hard to do, number one, what I want you to do, show you, I want you to know if you're going to give a person, if you're going to heal from the incident, you got a number one. They want you to know tonight that you got to grieve what is lost. Let me say it one more time. Third time's a charm. I want you to know tonight that when you are in a place where you want to hold on to an offense, when you are in a place 
where it feels like you want your lick back. When you are in a place where you want to stonewall the person and not talk to them. I want you to know the only way that you're going to first be healed and be able to forgive that individual is that you got to grieve what is lost. Somebody was saying, what you talking about, preacher? Well, you we, we preached on Genesis 45 on Sunday, and you know uh, the story of Joseph. We, we talked about how Joseph had this dream. And how Joseph had the dream, and as a result of he was going to be elevated above his brothers, and one day they put him in a pit, and one of the brothers said, we're not going to let him die in the pit, we're going to sell him into slavery, went to Parliament's house, y'all know the story, went from the pit uh, to, uh, to the prison to the palace, and he's now second in command in Egypt, read that from Genesis 45. Well, I want you to notice something in Genesis chapter 50. I need you to understand something because now Joseph is about to have a different conversation with his brothers. And I need you to see it in Genesis chapter 50, verse number 14. Notice what the Bible says. The Bible says, and Joseph buried his father. Watch this. He returned to Egypt with his brothers and all he had gone with him to bury his father. Y'all see that? When, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, Watch what they said to one another. If Joseph is holding a grudge against us, he will certainly repay us for all the suffering we caused him. I mean, it's because of us he was in the pit. It's, it was uh, because of us that he was sold into slavery. If he had not been sold into slavery, he never would have went to prison falsely. Amen. He says it's because of us. And the Bible says, so they sent this message to Joseph. Before he died, they lied, father gave a command. Say this, say this to Joseph, please forgive your brother's transgressions and their sins, their suffering. They caused you, therefore, uh, please forgive the transgressions of the service of God, uh, our father. Now, I need you to notice very, very closely uh, what this verse says, the next the phrase of it. The Bible says, Joseph wept. When their message came to him. Y'all missed it. The text says Joseph well. Y'all ain't got it yet. The, the Bible says when the message got to him. They buried the father. The father is dead. And they said daddy says he wants you to forgive us. The text says Joseph well. Oh I'm going to get happy by myself. Uh, the text says that when they got the message to Joseph. The Bible declares that Joseph wept. Why is your weeping, Joseph? Because Joseph, you have been promoted. You are in, a, in, in the palace. And I know your daddy died, but you have buried your daddy. So why in the world are you weeping? I hold the position that Joseph is grieving what is lost. Not just the loss of his dad, but he also is grieving of the loss of what happened. In other words, it he has spent years away from his family. He didn't get the chance to have time with his daddy like they had time with his daddy. They, he didn't have an opportunity to grow up in the same household like uh, with his brothers. Like every, he, he, But the text says he's weeping. In other words... That if you and I are going to be able to forgive people, we have to grieve what is lost. In other words, you got to be honest that it does hurt you. Okay. I, I, I know you try to act like Superman and Superwoman, but you got to be honest when what they did, what they did to you, it's okay to feel and be real about what hurt you and to say it hurt. In other words, you got to grieve what is lost. One of the lies of offense is that we tell ourselves that when they did it, it really wasn't that bad. One of the lies that keeps you trapped of offense and keep you unforgiving because although it hurts you, you walk around like you okay. And although you smiling on the outside, my God, you still got pain on the inside 
because you just won't pause for the cause and just grieve and be for real. It hurt that they did it to you. It it hurt that mama wasn't there. It hurt that daddy wasn't there. It hurt that, the, that y'all had to get a divorce. It hurt that they lied on you. It hurt about the Romans. And it's okay to be honest about what you've been through. Now, here it is. I want, I want you to see this because this is interesting to me. This is very interesting because he's weeping. Although he's in a place of power and position, he's weeping. Don't y'all don't don't y'all run past that too fast. Joseph, his dream has came true. He's second in command in Egypt. He has been promoted, and now he has power. But although he has been promoted and he has power, he still know what it means to weep. Okay, let me say it a different way. It's interesting to me that although he's been delivered from what he's been through, but he still ain't healed from it yet because he's crying about what they just told. See, it's possible to be delivered and not healed. Oh, my God. Tonight, I want you to know, I know it been 10 years ago. I know the trauma happened when you was a child. I know you've been divorced for a long time and you happy that you've been delivered from your trauma. But I want you to know tonight, just because you've been delivered don't mean you've been healed. Because there are a lot of folk who delivered from something, but they still can't sleep at night because they never been healed from the trauma that caused the pain. And tonight, what I want you to know from the word of God, that you got to be okay with grieving what is lost. You got to be okay with saying, yes, it did hurt. Yes, it broke my heart. Yes, it, I, I don't know how, how I can get through it. You got to be honest with God about where you are. So, so the first thing, if you're going to learn how to forgive, and if you're going to do it right, you got to grieve what is lost. Somebody say, I got to do it. Put it put in the chat box. I got to do it. Make a decision tonight that you're going to do it. Stop lying to your, that, that it don't bother you. Stop because you keep talking about it don't bother you, but you keep bringing it up in conversations with people. Oh, it bothered you. If, if amen, you can't even shake their hand. You can't even go to the family reunion, amen, because it's bothering. Stop acting in life. Start, start grieving uh, about the loss. Yes, it hurts. But it, although it hurts, I want to be healed. I don't want just to be delivered, but I also want to be healed. Oh, my God. See, you want deliverance in there. See, we got a lot of folk who've been delivered from stuff, but they ain't healed from stuff. So they that, so they'll end up repeating the cycle and breaking somebody else's heart and breaking somebody else's truck. Because although they've been delivered, they never dealt with their pain. But Joseph, the text says, he wept. So not only do you grieve what is lost, but you also, if you're going to do this when forgiveness is hard to do, not only do you grieve what is lost, but you got to surrender to God. Oh, we somebody put that in the chat box. Say, I'm going to surrender to God. See, if I'm going, if I'm going, when forgiving you is hard to do, I'm going to grieve what is lost, but I'm also going to surrender to God. Oh, let me say it again. Surrendering to God, brothers and sisters, is simply put it, I'm putting it in God's hands for real. <laughs> because sometimes we say we surrender to God when we really don't surrender to God. We give God half of it and we keep the other half. No, 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 no. But when you surrender to God, you say, God, I'm not going to keep it and put it in my hands. God, I'm going to put it in your hands. I, I love what the text says. Look at verse number 18 in our text. The text says, watch what it says. It says, then his brothers also came to him bowed down and said, we are your slaves. Y'all see that? Watch verse 19. But Joseph said to them, watch what Joseph said. Don't be afraid. Oh my God. Am I in the place of God? Ooh, you plan evil against me. God planned it for good to bring about the present result and the survival of many people. 
Do y'all see that? In other words, Joseph says, I've surrendered to God. I'm in power. I'm in position. And I can really do some harm to you. But Joseph says, I'm not in the replacement of God. I have surrendered to God. And although you meant it for evil for me, God meant it for good. Y'all ain't going to get happy with me tonight. But I'm going to tell you the reason why you ain't healed yet. The reason you ain't delivered yet, the reason you ain't set free yet, because you still trying to get your lick back. <laughs> you still ain't surrendering to God. You actually see whenever you try to seek revenge, hear this. Whenever you seek revenge, you know what you're telling God. You're telling God that you can handle it better than he can. <laughs> y'all ain't saying y'all. See, whenever you decide that you're going to get your lick back, and you're going to do to them what they did to you, you are telling God that you know better than God. But I just believe tonight because who God is and his mercy, and although it looked like uh, I'm losing, it just looked that way. It, it looks like I'm defeated. It just looked that way. It it looked like a man that I ain't going to be able to make. It just looked that way. I know you feel like that you got the upper hand. I know it looks as though that it's over for me, but I stopped out here to tell you when I surrendered to God, God has the final say, and I will not give more power to my offender by trying to get my lick back. I've decided to put it in God's hands. See, see, that's why I, that's why I want to drop in your spirit tonight and tell you, God, I want to tell you tonight that what you got to decide to do, you got to decide and say, God, I don't know how you're going to fix it. I don't know when you're going to fix it. They are harming me. They are mistreating me. But God, I know you still look high and you look low. And God, I put it in your hands. See, I want to know tonight. I know forgiveness is hard to do, but learn how to surrender to God for real. Learn how to pray to God for real. And when you pray to God, you don't worry about what you pray for because you say, God, whatever you do, it's going to be, it's all good. You, you can be like, you can be, be like the mentality to say, God, that God, I don't know when you're going to do it, but I just believe that when you show up, and when you show up with your mighty hand, I just believe because I surrendered to you for real, you're going to work it out. The, we will never be able to see everything God had can do for us until we're ready to surrender. Did y'all hear what I just said? You, you're uh, tonight. I know. I know you. You keep you. 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 You very. You. You like to quote scripture. You like to talk about you love the Lord. You like to sing all those songs. Amen. Ain't no wrong with that. But God knows you for real about him when you surrender to him for real. When you say, God, when it looks like you lose and you say, God, I'm still going to do it. It's almost what Jesus did. Jesus went to the cross and it just looked like he was losing. Oh, y'all do know that. It looked like that it was all done for Jesus. Amen. When they looked at him, they shook his head and said, if you be the son of God, come down from the cross. It just looked like he was losing. But oh, but when they put him in that tomb, three days later, he got up with all power in his hands. And sometimes God will use your private struggle and put it on public display. So he can show people what it looks like to surrender to God. Did you hear what I just said? Sometimes God will use the thing you're praying about in private, the thing you struggle about in private, the thing that's, 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 that's pulling you in. God will use that thing in private and make a public display of it because God says, I'm trying to show a, a watching world what it means to surrender. Oh my God, I need you to know tonight. I don't know who needs to hear the word tonight, but I just believe tonight you need to surrender. I know you can't figure it. You don't know the facts. Amen. And sometimes I said, somebody said, preacher, you don't know the facts. All these facts, all these facts, and you telling me that I got to trust God and surrender. Yeah, because faith outweighs facts. <laughs> See, I know, I know what people are saying. I know what it looks like. I know all of that. But faith outweighs facts. And when it's time for me to forgive you, it don't mean that it was all right that you did what you did. 
No, 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 no. It ain't it don't mean that. It just means that God, I'm God's child. And because I'm God's child, I commit everything to God. So although the facts may say one thing, y'all finna see what my God is about. Because when I come out of this thing, I'm going to tell the world I forgave them because my faith outweighed the facts. Somebody put that in the chat about my faith going to outweigh the facts tonight because I believe that if we're ever going to be healed and delivered and set free, there must be a surrenderance to God. So, no, so, so what you got to do? You got to grieve. You got to grieve what is lost. You got to, you got to surrender to God. But, but, but lastly, you got to release the offense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you gotta, you, you gotta release the offense. I, I, I told you earlier. Uh, that in the in the book called The Bait by John Prevere, he 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 talks about how Satan uses offense as bait. But but if you're going to to forgive, you got to release the offense. Somebody say release. Somebody put in there release. I need you to see this. Look at verse twenty one, and we'll be done. It says, therefore, watch what Joseph says. Don't be afraid. I will take care of you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Wait a minute. You telling me it's because of you that I didn't get a chance to spend time with my daddy like I could have. You're telling me uh, I would through all that trouble. I could have lost my life numerous of times all because of what you did to me. But what I'm going to do. I'm going to take care of you. And your little ones. And on top of that. I'm going to comfort you. You know you're growing spiritually. When you are able to help those. That tried to hurt you. Lord have mercy. So when you release the offense. You give up your right. To receive what is owed to you. Did y'all hear what I just said tonight? When, when you release the offense, you give up your right to receive what is owed to you. This, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it one more time. I'm trying to help somebody tonight. When you and I are release the offense, we give up the right to receive what is owed to us. So even if you never tell me you sorry, I'm going to release the offense. Even if you never want to have a conversation about it, I'm going to release the offense because I know how to bless those that try to hurt me. I ain't waiting on you to say you sorry because sometimes what happens is um, I'm waiting for you to uh -huh. do my unforgiveness. So I stay, I stay mad and I hold on to an offense because I think if I stay mad, that sooner or later you're going to ask for forgiveness. But I, this is what I've learned. That I don't care how mad you stay at a person. If that person ain't ready to apologize, if that person ain't never ready to say they sorry, it'll never happen. So I'm not going to wait on you to, to free me from what I am. Because I ain't going to lose no sleep while you walking around free free uh, free as a bird. I'm going to learn how to release the offense. I need you to notice what he said. He says, he said, verse 20, I'm going, I'm, don't be afraid. Says, don't, don't worry. I'm going to take care of you and your little one. See, you know you really doing something when you can bless those. You can bless those. I heard you. I told y'all last Sunday, I think I told you this anyway, that it's hard, it's hard to hate a person that you're praying for. <laughs> oh, wait. It, it, it's very hard to, to, to pray for a person and you hating on them too. You hate them too. No, that's hard to do. And so I, I, I promise you this work, and we ending. I promise you this works. Learn the person that mistreated you. The person that you hold on to the offense with, I'm here to tell you tonight, pray for them for real tonight. Mm. If you ain't got your list, go ahead and get your list. Pray for them for real. Pray for them until you mean it, like I told you Sunday. But you pray to them and your prayer should be 
Bless them, God. Now, you know what blessing means? Y'all know what you speak well of. That was the word bless. It's come, we get the word eulogy. It means to speak well of, right? So this, this is what I want you to do tonight. And we're done. This is what I want you to do. If you make a habit of this, God rewards faithfulness. But you start talking, when, we, when, when people have harmed you and cursed you, speak well of them. You start asking God to do for them what you want him to do for you. That's how you do it. See, that's how you release the offense. That's how you know you released it because you, you start praying prayers and you say, honestly, God, I want you to do for them. When I pray for them, I sincerely pray, God, I want you to do for them what I want you to do for me. That spiritual mind, that it's interesting. God grows us up when we get offended. <laughs> you don't know how mature you are or how immature you still are until you get offended. Oh, I know I'm right about it. I got to grow you up. See, people do two things in your life. People do two things. They're going to show you how immature you are, still are, or how mature you have become. I double dog dare you. Any relationship you can think of, husband, wife, sister, brother, parent, child, I don't care who it is. If you, if you look at the relationship, those relationships teach you something. Any relationship, I don't care what the relationship any is going to show you if you still have you became mature or are you still immature. Offense will teach you how to grow up spiritually. That's why you got to release the offense. That's the word tonight. I, it is my prayer. It's my hope that, that tonight, if you're going to understand what when, when forgiving you, it's hard to do, that you grieve what is lost. Be honest about the pain. Don't act like it don't bother you. When they ask you, are you offended? Tell them it's offended you. Stop saying, and when they ask you, are we good? And you walk away, say, I'm good, but you know you mad. And you walk away mad. And you're telling two or three people about what they did when they asked you, what you mad? No, no, no. Be honest. That offended me. Now let's walk through this. Bless the name. Surrender to God. Stop trying to get your lick back. Stop being passive aggressive, trying to find ways that you can do, you can make them feel the same pain you felt. Because whenever you want to make them to feel the same pain you felt, you have not surrendered to God yet. Bless the name of Jesus. See, I, malice is the sin of, a, of the spirit. It's not the sin of the flesh because I can't see you being malicious. But maliciousness and being malice is this mentality that you won't, you ain't going to do nothing to me, but you just wish harm on me. And you won't say that out loud, but you will say it eternally. Amen. I'm asking prayers for the job and you wishing I don't get the job. You wishing that the that the house, that I won't get the house. You wishing that stuff because you got malice in your heart. I'm telling you, surrender to God. I'm telling you, surrender. And then release the offense. Release the offense. Stop. Free yourself from believing that if you stay unforgiving, some way it's going to win them back for them to say they sorry. They don't have, I don't care how mad you stay at that person. If they don't think they did nothing wrong, they ain't going to ask for forgiveness. You got to release yourself and release them for the offense. I pray tonight that you will receive this message. Tonight, as we go into this series, the F word, that we will learn how to be people who can forgive. I, I pray that. It is my prayer and it's my hope that, that don't look at people in your life all the time. Oh, that's a bad. Because here's the thing. I don't care how much you run from people, how much you try to stonewall people and stay away from people. God are always going to bring them some of them same people back in your life to, to grow you up. Amen. Folks, I'm, I'm going to leave this job because I can't stand. You going to leave a job because you don't like somebody? Hello in here. Because what's going to happen is, what's going to happen when that somebody going, you going to meet that same type of personality on a new job? Y'all talk back to me. It's the same thing. I'm going to leave a church because I don't like so-so. What's going to happen when that person, that personality that show up at another church? All I'm saying is that you got to start admitting, are you a growing mature? Are you mature? Are you immature? 
You know how you're going to know that? You know how God show you are you mature or immature? With people. How you respond to the offense. How you respond when a person offends you. is going to tell you where you are spiritually. Are you immature or have you matured? And I pray tonight that you receive this message. That God, this engrafted word, which is able to save man's souls. Amen. Any questions tonight? And I'll try to answer any, any questions tonight uh, as we close. Any questions tonight? Uh, Sister Kelly, do you have any questions on your end uh, for me that I can probably answer? Any questions? Any questions tonight? Mm, no, sir, I don't see any. Amen. This is a hard, This I know this is always a hard study to study. Yeah, because forgiveness is hard to do. It's a process. So I pray tonight that uh, you allow the word seek in your spirit, seek in your soul, and the people that that you are you holding this stuff for against, release them. They don't owe you anything. Release them. Put it in the hands of God. God know what to do more than you. And tonight, that's what the uh, that's 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 the thought process, and that's what we want to do. Um, for that sister uh dr uh, uh more asks any thought for forgiveness for repeat offenders we're gonna get to that because that's, that's a whole study by itself uh and so um i can't answer that in one short thing but we are, we are, we're going to deal with that in the series about repeat offenders uh and uh just hold on hold tight and we'll get to it uh shortly amen uh <clears throat> any other questions i have a question um so what if you 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 are in a state of release, right? You pretty much you release the person, the offender. However, the they want to come back and talk to you about something that you have released them from. So how do you uh how do you move forward with that when you don't want to I mean, you didn't went through the part where you released them, you turned them over to the good Lord. You don't want to go back to talk about the situation because you didn't release the God and you're not trying to take it back. So how do you respond to that? You respond by saying what you just said. I'm done with it. Okay. I don't need a shovel. I don't need a shovel. I didn't bury it. Okay. I didn't bury it. Uh, you know, sometimes people, sometimes, oftentimes, sometimes people, when you when you forgive a person and they're looking for you to respond a certain way and you don't give them the response they're looking for, they want to rehash some stuff. And you got to learn how to make sure that you don't allow people to make you go back and give a shovel. I don't, I don't, I'm not going back and get a shovel. I'm, I've already buried that. And because I buried it, I don't want to relive it because what happens is you relive it, then you have, you have to, you have to deal with, the, the, the trauma that you have you have be, uh, learned to get through, now you're bringing that stuff back up. You know, we're not going there. So you just be honest and say, I, I'm not going there. Uh, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to deal with those issues because I've already dealt. I've already buried it. That's how I will respond. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, any other questions? Amen. We're going to continue this study in uh, in the in the month of uh, November, and so y'all stay along with us. Y'all hold on tight because I believe, uh, especially as we enter into this new year, you kind of let some stuff go. Stop, you know, stop holding on to stuff. We're going to kind of deal. We're going to walk our way there, trying to help ourselves out of this matter. So, uh, I pray again that something will say that will bless you in a mighty, mighty way. And I know it's something sometimes you got to soak in, you got to sink in. So. Uh, I pray that you'll receive it tonight uh, again.